Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to Ed Randall's Talking Rams. Uh, here on this video series, we're paying tribute to those men and women, members of the Athletic Hall of Fame, who distinguished themselves on the field of play and brought honor to Fordham University. We hope you'll pass the word about this series to all your friends in the Fordham community and have them tune in. We continue our series of conversations with a 2011 inductee into our Hall of Fame who made history on the football field. As a defensive back, he was named first team All Patriot League in his junior year and in his senior year when he led the league in interceptions. On two separate occasions, he had three interceptions in a game, first against Duquesne and then two weeks later against Brown. Following that season, he received many awards, among which was designation as the 2004 Patriot League Defensive Player in the Year and was a consensus first team All-American. In his career at Fordham, he recorded 14 interceptions, which tied him for second best in Rams history and third best in league history. After graduation, he became an all-star with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the Canadian Football League, which he helped lead to the Grey Cup Championship, the CFL Super Bowl, in 2007. There, he was nicknamed Mr. Everything, just like Joe DeBarry. We welcome back to Fordham, one of the elite players in school history, whose plaque you can see in the Rose Hill Gym, Tad Cornegay, CBA class of 2005, Mr. Everything. May I refer to you as Tad or Mr. Everything? Which would you prefer, sir? <laughs> well, after you uh, say all that, you can say whatever you want, brother. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. Uh, I'll take what, Tad What makes now. your... All right, fine. And the last guy who called you Thaddeus, uh, where exactly is he buried? <laughs> you know what's crazy? After, since my football career is over, I'm, I've been trying to convert back over to Thaddeus because it sounds better when you handle this. So. <laughs> More official. <laughs> Absolutely. What makes you... You know, Ted, well, uh, Tad, what makes your accomplishments on the football field all, all the more impressive is that you're not a big guy. Uh, and you've been hearing this all your life. Uh, what was it like going out uh, onto the trying to make these teams uh, at five feet ten? Yeah. Let me tell you something. Um, since I was since I first started playing football, I've always been the smallest guy. Never made weight the wrong way. Um, I was a uh, five one, one hundred and twelve pounds in my freshman year in high school. <laughs> so yeah. even when I got to Fordham, when I was a freshman at, at uh, Fordham, I was only uh, 152 pounds. And I walked wow. in that field telling everybody, I'm, I'm going to start. I said, I'm, I don't know who you are, who they are. I'm going to play. I just always had that mentality to you know, like always just be competitive and just know your heart weighs more than your actual weight. Do you, do you remember that day when you walked onto the football field in high school at 112 pounds? And, and what the other, the very kind, uh, your 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 <laughs> classmates, what what your very kind classmates said to you? Oh, uh, I mean, I was the smallest, the smallest runt on the field, man. But I always had a heart. You know, they knew I wasn't going to stop, no matter who I went against. I felt bad for my parents and family because they were all were just nervous out there for me because <laughs> they knew I was going to go against whoever, what size, the whole matter. So, I mean, it was it was it was fun, man. I always felt like I had to prove something, and I was always up for the challenge. Ted, was it tough to get their support? No, not at all. I mean, I come I come from a football background. Uh, just my neighborhood, Trenton, New Jersey. I grew up in a little town called Hamilton. It was nicknamed White City. Um, we all played football since we were probably can talk, right? So football, that's all That's all we all had and for all the boys. And it was always known that if you were a boy, you're going to play football. So even at 112 pounds, your parents were fine and encouraged you. They had no choice. I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna play no matter what, just because my father played, my cousins played. Mm -hmm. The neighborhood, it was a neighborhood sport. I mean, it was really big. I mean, almost like you would think the little town in um in Jersey was almost like in Texas. Like football was everything. Uh, talk about your parents for a moment. Uh, uh, in preparing mm -hmm. for our interview, I read that they both worked at GM. Tell us a little bit about them. Yes, they uh, both worked at General Motors for probably 20 plus years. Um, my father uh, probably retired later than my mother. Um, just hard working men and women, working hard to, to provide for their families. 
for their kids. I have an older sister, so they did all they possibly can to just make sure I stayed on the right path and continue to be successful. Uh, so you called yourself the runt, and yet you became captain of your high school football team uh, yeah. and brought attention from, uh, I'm sure, various colleges and universities. Tell us about the recruiting process and how Fordham came into the picture. Ah, what a story this is. Um, so when I graduated high school, I actually had no scholarships. No scholarships uh, thrown my way. I was uh, 10 points short of the clearinghouse. And I thought I was ten points over. What is that for the for those who don't know? What uh, tell us what that means? Uh, it's basically a certain you have to have, have to have a certain GPA score with your SAT score in order to clarify as a collegiate athlete. Um, and I was mm -hmm. ten points short. I thought I was ten points over. I don't know how that got mixed up. Um, so after I graduated high school, I went to a prep school by the name of Valley Forge Military Academy, where it gave me an opportunity to basically take the SAT score up. I mean, take the SAT score, get it up. Um, also, still take co collegiate uh, collegiate uh, credits while I'm there, and also play another another uh, year of football. Because Valley Forge Military Academy at that time was very well known for for the for their football program. We had scouts at our practices, mm -hmm. so wow. I had an opportunity to really step up my game even more even more. Because I at Hamilton in high school. I was, uh, I thought I was an okay player, I guess. Uh, some people thought I was a really good player, but I, I had no I had no offers, so could have been that good, right? <laughs> but when I went to Valley Forge, I really, I really shined. I really, uh, I really had an opportunity to really sh showcase my skill, had some Big East offers, some ACC offers, um, but um, they all fell through due to the, due to the reason I left Valley Forge in midseason and my transcripts didn't release. So a lot of lot of lot of lot of the uh, teams that were looking at me didn't know why, didn't really care why. Fordham actually came to my school at Valley Forge when I was there. I never forget uh, Ron Momano was the uh, was the scout. He came to uh, Valley Forge and I seen a school Fordham in New York City. I'm like, hey, uh, who are you here for? Cornegate don't even bother. He said, you're you're going way bigger than us. Don't. I'm like. I want to I want to check out a school in New York City I've never been before, right? He said, nope, not wasting my time. You're not coming here. They found that I wasn't coming. I mean, they found that I wasn't uh, going to the ACC or Big East. They called me and said, hey, Cornegay, you see, we see you're still available. You want to come? Absolutely. <laughs> so that's how I got to Fordham. Wow. What, if anything, Not too many people know that, that story. Well, uh, they will now, uh, thank goodness. So uh, what, if anything, did you know about Fordham before they came into your life to play football i didn't to be honest i really didn't i mean like i said uh i grew up just idolizing michigan i was going to go to michigan ironically when i got to valley forge my roommate had a scholarship to michigan already <laughs> oh <laughs> Lucky thanks me. a lot thanks a <laughs> lot yeah marcus Fine. marcus curry my brother to this day though um uh. <laughs> I, I didn't know anything about Fordham to be honest uh because like uh i was the first one to go to college in my family so not too many um college stories right so and uh, I mean, Dave Clawson and his staff, they, uh, they saved my life, to be honest. Really? How? I mean, just by giving me the opportunity to play collegiate sports with a full ride to go to, to, go to college. I mean, I come from, uh, I wouldn't say middle class, couldn't afford college. So under middle class. Um, so there was no possible way I was going to get, I was going to be able to pay for Fordham, right? I mean, I had the grades. I had the uh, sport, the, the the ability to play athletic sports at a Division One AA level. Um, so he gave me the opportunity, and I took advantage of it. What do you remember about your first day on campus when you saw Fordham University? That was phenomenal. I'm like, uh, so the only the only college campus, um, well, besides going on visits and stuff, um, that I ever been on was Rutgers, because you know it's right down the street. I never got to really experience the, the, the college lifestyle or aspects before that. Um, so when I walked on campus, I, it was like dream come true. Like this is, this is, I'm actually in college. This is great. I'm, I'm taking full advantage of it. <laughs> it was lovely. I mean, a beautiful campus. I mean, we can't ask for a better campus at Fordham. Uh, where did you first live when you arrived? Alumni courts South. Well, well, actually, that's that's false. That's where I stayed at after football camp. You know, football camp they put you uh, 
in uh where was it uh Hughes Hall, I think. Hughes Hall. We all stayed in stayed in Hughes Hall, my first that was the first place I stayed and that was during football camp. But um during the season I'm I'm alumni court south guy for sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh huh, and I'm sure made many friends that uh, continue to be your friends to this day. Oh, absolutely! Brotherhoods all over the place with sisterhood. I mean, uh, basically, uh, I got brothers and sisters to this day that I still communicate with. I and uh, decided to pursue business uh, in uh, CBA in CBA. Uh, yes. Favorite favorite subject was what? My favorite subject was prop was probably marketing. It was it was just to me. Uh, I'm a showman, right? I, I have showmanship, so it was something I can take off the field, right, and just really showcase of uh, showcase my talent or just be myself behind the scenes. So it was pretty cool. Was there a least favorite subject? Yeah, uh, I would probably say uh, at the time, but now now I'm all for it. Managerial accounting, I hate it. <laughs> I did not want any parts of it. It uh -huh. just, it just really gave me nightmares. But now I'm all about my dollars, my numbers, and dollars. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, what was it about it at the time that you didn't like? You know what? I think it took my mind off of everything I didn't want to take it off of. Right? I, I was actually trying to enjoy college, enjoy football enjoy the sports, enjoy everything outside of college, which I shouldn't have been at the time, right? So you really have to stay focused when it comes to manager accounting. Like, you really do. Like, you have to stay on top of things. And I was a little distracted at some times, as most of us are in college, but I didn't know how to manage um, being successful at manager accounting while I was living my college life as well. So it was tough. I mean, I, I, I passed the grade, I passed the class, but it was tough. Uh, did you have a favorite building on campus? Favorite building? Um, favorite building. Definitely not the gym, since that's where we did our uh, <laughs> late night runs. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what do you call it? Let's see. Um, wa wash. I like the wash. Wash water is cool. Because I mean... Mm -hmm. it, Introduced to that building when you're an underclassman, a freshman, and you know all the upperclassmen stay. It was almost like the cool building to stick to get into if you were if you were like a uh, young freshman sophomore. So that was always a cool building. <laughs> did you live in the same place uh, all the years you were at Fordham, or did you, or were you in different no. places? Where were you? No, I got off campus as soon as I could. I mean, I I wanted my my freedom, so um, I lived off campus uh, the rest of my uh, three years at Fordham outside of uh, mm -hmm. freshman year because uh, when you're a freshman, you got to stay on campus as an athlete. Uh, did you have a favorite hangout in your spare time? Favorite hangout? Um, so, well, we had a, uh, my first two years, well, the whole four years, but it was really popular. It was a bar called Alumni. We call it the slums because it was, it was, it was, you know, it was, it had a little, little disgusting stench to it. So we called it slums, but <laughs> alumni was cool. Um, Ram Lounge was probably probably our, our my go-to. Uh, it was a, it was a mm -hmm. nice little bar called Ram Lounge. Uh, I know none of them, obviously I'm very old now, so none of them are there, but yeah, Ram Lounge and, and uh, alumni for sure. Uh, Upper Deck was good too. I don't know if you uh, heard of Upper Deck. Upper Deck was good for us too as well. Uh, to this day, Ted, do you miss the cafeteria food? Do I? <laughs> um, there, there were moments. Uh, some certain days that certain things were cooked, um, <laughs> fresh, freshly, freshly cooked that I that I enjoyed from some of my cafeteria guys there. I like I was very, I was very friendly to everybody, right? So I, I had some, I had good friends that was back there in the cafeteria, and they, they used to give me the head shake if it was. Did you eat it or don't eat it? So I, I, I was, I was a part of the interview. They, so. You were still being <laughs> scouted <laughs> off the field. Yeah, you yeah. were being scouted like you were <laughs> on the field. Wow, what an advantage! Good, so good my cafeteria, for you. My, yeah, my cafeteria family took care of me. <laughs> good for you, and you live to talk about it. Um, 
first game. <laughs> Suiting up for the Fordham Rams. Tell us about it. Hmm. Uh, it was against uh, Fairfield, actually. Uh, it was the first, yeah, first, yeah, Fairfield. It was away. Um, jitters. A little nervous. A little ambitious. Knew I had to actually um, put on a show. Just to let everybody know, like, I'm a back, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a back of what I, what I spoke when I first got here, right? So, it was uh it was pretty nerve wracking, but I I I love that part of me. Like that, I I like the excitement, I like that. I love all the nerves that you get from football. I like close games. I've always been crazy like that. I like overtime games. Like so, it was it was a crazy feel. It was a crazy feeling, but I came out successful. We came out successful. I had two interceptions, so that was the start of my career. Was there a moment in time where you started to feel really comfortable? I belong. Um, I'm here, and I'm here to make a statement. My junior year, my my junior year, uh, actually no. Rewind that sophomore year. Sophomore year, we won a uh, Patriot League championship. Um, that's when I came into my shell, like uh, probably because probably because we believe right that the, the whole team believed. Um, it was a pretty crazy crazy year coming from. I think we were seven and four. Were we seven and four that year? No, seven and four. My first, my first year, I believe, and then we won the league championship nine and three, nine and three. My second year, and um, just from everything we went through, as far as dealing with um, new new players, um, coaching staff. I guess was new to some of the players that were there before me because uh, Clawson, I think Dave Clawson came in my the year before I before I was there. So there were still there were still players that were still under another coach before that. So you dealt with like mm -hmm. a lot of people with you know different different feelings of the, the coaching coaching. Um, but also, I don't know if it, a lot of people remember, but 2002 there was talks about getting rid of the football program. So we had we were dealing with seeing this in the, in the, in the, in the uh, campus papers and still winning games and still fighting through it and still, you know, just maintaining the goals. And we actually won the, the Patriot League championship that year. So that year was just phenomenal for me personally, just because I actually thought I, thought I fit, I knew I fit in, right? I, I always thought I fit in, but that year, because I had a, had a really good season, I dropped a lot of interceptions, but I had a ton of PBUs, pass breakups, <laughs> but you no, know, I was covering everybody just because I knew how close we were to being great and I, and I felt it. So it was a pretty good experience and surreal feeling just winning a, a championship in college for sure. Were you freaking out when you heard rumors about them dropping the football program? Uh, you know what? For a moment, probably. A, a, it was a little freak out for everybody. Everybody's, you know, you have people that, oh, you know what? This is going to happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, um, transfer out. It was a little talk, but at the end of the day, the camaraderie was so good. And this is the first time Fordham had a, I actually had a winning team and a winning season. We just was focused on the, on the task, man. And we just, we just kept our head down and, and just kept pushing. And knew we had to go out with a bang if they were going to get rid of it. <laughs> As a player, how did you handle pressure? I don't, you know what's, I don't, I don't feel pressure when I play. Maybe during the beginning of the game when I'm, when I'm, when I'm thinking about everything, but once I start playing, I don't think about anything. I just react. I do a lot of reacting. Um, and when, when, when tough times come is when I showcase, I showcase my talent the best. And with your success, did you get the sense through the years that opposing coaches knew that you were on the field and that they contoured their game plan away from you because you were so successful? Yeah, um, I did at first, but um, my senior my senior year is when I really knew. Like, cause, uh, like you said, uh, I had probably, the, I think it was like the first three games, I had two, two games with three interceptions. And after a while, during... <laughs> <laughs> doing warm-ups. Yeah, I think I, I think I had 
I think I had seven picks in the first four games. I think. I think after that, like warm up, the quarterback some telling me another player like we're not even coming your way. Just you, you need some snacks or something. <laughs> you don't know, feel like they would tell me like I don't even know why. Don't even I don't know why you're even playing. Like, you, you're not going to get anything. <laughs> so it was. It was, it was just a real feel like I, it made me feel like I'm doing something right. <laughs> right. So maybe I can take this to another level. What a great compliment that is though. There can't be any greater compliment in football that they were avoiding you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a good feeling, but then at the same time, you're like, oh, they're just trying to get me out of my game. You're still thinking like, oh, they're trying to whip, make me fall asleep. <laughs> Faking you out. So, yeah. Yeah. So you still got to scale your toes. Um, it was a guy like Daryl Green with the, uh, as they used to be called, the Washington Redskins, was he an idol of yours? Again, a guy not of large physical stature and yet played his, played uh, until what, uh, his late 30s uh, and wound up in the, in the, in the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame? Yeah, I mean, I knew all about Daryl Green. Uh, I, I thought he played, a, I thought he was a phenomenal legend for sure. But I was an offensive guy. Jerry Rice was my, my, my idol when I was growing up. Even 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 Fordham recruited me as a as a receiver. But they told me when I got there, they said you can play receiver, but we need you to start at corner right now because we've seen that you play corner. Um, so that's how I got the corner. So Jerry Rice, then it was Desmond Howard, and then Charles Woodson was like uh, my three guys, Those that, are your um, guys. that I idolized. Yeah, those are my guys. Uh, I, I mentioned in the introduction, and so did you, about the two games, three uh, three weeks apart, where you had three interceptions against Duquesne, and then uh, two games after that, you had three against uh, Brown. It, take us through those mm -hmm. games. So Duquesne, um, I'm a, I am remember this very, <laughs> like it was yesterday. So the, the Duquesne game, um, I was going against a receiver, Oh man, what was his what was his name? I think his name might have been last name might have been Ward. I can't remember. Uh, good receiver. He was a he was, he was a preseason All American as well. His father played in the NFL, um, so they were big enough this matchup all week. Um, they're coming up. They're coming to Fordham, and this they were scouts of the game. I found out they were scouts of the game, and they were there to see him. They weren't there to see me. And I was told this before the game. Oh, <laughs> now now we're really stoked. I was told this before the game. So I was I was already in my zone, like, I'm not giving this guy nothing. He had like three catches for 15 yards. He did an interview after the game, said this was the hardest person I ever went against. But after my third interception, I kind of did a gesture. <laughs> I kind of did a gesture on this. I called it on their sideline. It was a comeback. I'll never forget, I called it on their sideline. I kind of did like a little gesture that um, in a gladiator, you know, when he picks up the dirt to smell it before he, before he uh, goes against his uh, – and I did it, and I didn't know the, the head coach was right in front of me. And, like, he's screaming at me, saying, F you, Cornegay, and I just screamed back at him. And it was, like, a big commotion. They thought they thought I threw dirt on him, but it wasn't that. I was just, like, doing my little gesture. <laughs> we, we both apologized, sent letters to each other, but it was it was a moment for sure. And then two weeks later, three more against, uh, against Brown. What happened in that game? So, yes. So after I had the three – um, and I had some, I can't remember how many tackles I had. Once I got that, I got a call saying that I'm on the Buck Buchanan list for outstanding defensive player of the year for one double A. So once I heard that, I'm like, oh, I'm going after everything. I gotta, <laughs> I can be a Buck, I can be a Buck, I'm, I can be a Buck Buchanan finalist. Oh yeah, for sure. So after I, after I got the call that I was on that list, I just try to play my best games every single week. But after after the Brown game, I didn't really get too much action, but I still had some good stats. I made it to the final, the finals for the Buck McKinnon, Buck McKinnon Award. I like the, I think it was a, the final was like uh I think it was either six or nine of us, and I was one of the nine. So mm -hmm. I didn't win, but it was all good. Did you ever reach the point where you said to yourself, uh, and maybe you didn't tell anybody because it might sound conceited. Why the hell are they throwing in my area? <laughs> uh, some games, some some games, some moments. Never a thought. Um, never a premeditative thought because every man can get beat. 
or any, any single day. It just depends on how you approach your situation. So I've always stayed content and make sure I was in my zone and never let anybody get me out of it.